Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking again about Docker. In particular, we're going to be talking about signals and why they can be a little bit weird in Docker. Um, this is actually a problem that I have been dealing with for a decade. And fortunately, in 2016, uh, my, my favorite coworker and I solved this problem. Uh, and I'm going to show you the solution. Uh, fortunately, now a solution to this is built into Docker, so you don't need to install a package that I'm going to show you, um, but I'm going to still show you the problem and show you the solution using a particular uh, package. Now, uh, the core of this problem, if you've heard this before, is that uh, when you run a container, a Docker container, the container itself has its own PID space, uh, process ID. And this means that the first process in the container starts with PID1. And due to the way the Linux kernel works, PID1 has special casing inside the kernel. Uh, because typically PID1 is your init system. If we do PSCF and grep, I don't know how to find it, B1. Uh, yeah, these are all the things that have parent one. Here we go. Our init system, sbin init splash. Uh, runs as PID1. And PID1 has special things and uh, special signal handling. And so this means that Docker containers, uh, by default, without any special stuff added to them or without any special command line arguments, are going to have the same problems or behaviors with PID1. Uh, to show you that really quickly, I'm going to make a very small Python script uh, that's just, I don't know, while true prints dots. Uh, print dots forever, and we'll do time dot sleep one. So if we were to just run this, it's just going to print dots every second. Oh, but we need to run it in. That's surprising. Anyway, we need to run it in unbuffered mode so that it actually prints. Oh, I guess flip flush it. Okay, so now it's just gonna print dots. Anyway, that's not the important part of this. I also wanna make a Docker image from Ubuntu Jammy. Run apt get update and apt get install y no install recommends. Can you tell I've written a lot of these? Um, we'll get to this package in a second. That's gonna be our solution to our problem or other init systems. Um, and we're gonna add Python 3 as well. Yep, get clean, rmrev, rlib apps. There's no, it's lists. I don't know, I'd look it up. Anyway, uh, we're gonna make this very simple Docker file, uh, docker build dash t test dot. Uh, fortunately, I already built this beforehand and managed to type exactly the same characters, so we got the same Docker image again. And then we're gonna run this, so. We have that file there, docker run rm-i. We're going to volume mount the current directory to source in read-only mode, and then we are going to run that um, run that Python script. Yeah, and actually to show you this better, I'm going to run this in a subshell, uh, just to kind of directly show the problem. Um, it <laughs> Actually, no. Well, we'll show you like this, and then I'll show you in a sub subshell as well. So if we run this, uh, oh, please say our image. Valid container path RO. Source RO. And this needs source e.py. Type this too quickly. There we go. OK. So you can see we're now executing our, our container. And if we go to try and stop this container, uh, by using docker stop, oh, this is beforehand, Let that so you don't see it. Uh, if we find our container, you can see it's this one here. And if I do docker stop on this, you'll see it hangs. And this continues to run. And this is a pretty common problem. I've seen this many, many times with lots and lots of docker containers, especially in production, uh, where they don't stop quickly. And you can see there's this warning here, stop signal, sig term, failed to stop the container uh, in 10 seconds, resorting to sig kill. So it, it tried to use sig term to stop the container, um, but was unable to. Eventually it waited for some timeout period, and then it brutally killed the process because it sent sig term and this thing just ignored it. 
uh, even though the default behavior of sig term is to end a process. And this is, again, that special casing of process ID 1. Uh, and the, the TLDR of the special casing is that unless PID 1 registers a signal handler, it will ignore all signals. And so um, what I, the reason I wanted to use bash uh, to show you another thing is technically Python 3 or Python in general registers a signal handler for sig int. And so this still works if we were to do uh, docker kill signal int and then this container ID here. This will send sig int to that container. And that does actually stop this process. Here. So that's because Python 3 is registering a signal handler. Uh, if this were in a subshell, which is common if you write commands not in the JSON format in your Docker file. Um, admittedly, you don't want to do this because you have sort of an unnecessary bash process. You, you have like a, you have more processes in your container than you would really want to. Um, but also it has another problem in that bash by default does not register signal handlers. And so if we were to um, do this same kill, but with this new container ID, uh, so we're sending sig int to that container. Uh, you'll see, oh, actually this one does. Okay, maybe bash does fast along. Is it sh that does not? Uh, no, but sh will just be the same. This. Yeah, okay, so there we go. So sh does not register a sig int handler. And so you can see here that even though we sent sig int to this container, it just ignored it. We didn't get the keyword interrupt like we expected, and the container moved on. And so in enters dumbinit. Now, before I mention that uh, PID1 is special case and that any signal that's not registered doesn't get forwarded. And so what do you think dumbinit does? It registers every single signal handler. Uh, and forwards it along to its child processes. It also does a few other things like reaping exited child, children and other stuff like that. Um, but if we were to run the same thing, uh, yeah, just kill the container directly. Oh, uh, I do like that these are <laughs> prefix matched and you can be as short or as long as you want. I, I probably could have just done four even. Um, so in enters Deminit, uh, Deminit is a very, very simple init system, uh, and it allows you to make things signalable. That's kind of its point. Uh, we do the same kill signal int with this. Uh, now I'm actually using podman here, so if the output looks slightly different, it's because it's podman, but docker, docker podman, same thing. Oh, signal int. You'll see now we are able to even though sh doesn't register a signal handler, Deminit will forward a signal along to all of its children. And you can see we're able to terminate our, our container uh, using sigint. We can also terminate it with docker stop, which is really, really cool. Uh, before, before you noticed that we weren't able to do docker stop this, um, but now it does indeed work here. And that's because the, the default behavior of sig term is now taking over. Uh, dominant forwarded sig term along to all of its children, and then they were terminated. Um, and in fact, you can see that if we do dominant. Yeah, you can see here um, terminal TTY stuff. You can ignore that. That's why it's in verbose mode. Um, yes, do docker stop this. See here that dominant received signal 15, that being sig term, it forwarded. Signal 15 along to its children. It received signal 17, which I believe is sig child. L. 17 is sig child. This happens when a uh, child process terminates. Um, and you can see here that child process two was terminated by signal 15. Um, and I guess uh, Docker stop sent sig term so many like sends it repeatedly, so we actually got two uh, signal 15s here. Oh, wait, no, it had multiple children. Right, 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 right. Uh, yeah, because we had the SH process and the binary process. Anyway, all that to say, Dominant receives signals and then sends it to the children, and so you have signalable containers, and they can stop in a meaningful amount of time. Um, you can still do all of your normal process cleanup by handling signals and doing stuff. Receive sig term and 
close your database connections or whatever you need to do. Um, versus if you don't receive the signal ever, they're going to be severed brutally. Uh, but anyway, uh, dumb init is one way to solve this problem. There are many other init systems. And, uh, you know, we've been solving this problem since 2016. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Docker also, since, since like 2018, and Podman does as well, uh, comes with its own init system that will automatically mount to your container for you. And so you can just pass dash dash init. Now, this init system is a lot less, well, it has different features from dumb init. And so I don't think it actually has the same like signal forwarding that dumb init does, but it does register enough signals. Fail to exec PID one. Oh, of course. Um, it, it looks like this is the init, init? I don't know how to say it. That's the init system that they chose to bundle. Uh, and you can see here, it does, I believe, work with term. Let's see, docker kill dash dash signal int this. Yeah, so you can see here it didn't forward it along to all of the children. So it behaves a little bit different than dumbinit. I actually like dumbinit's behavior better, but I'm a little bit biased because I helped write it. Uh, but it does also, I believe, makes stop work. So you can see it does forward along sig term properly. So you do get containers that will die in meaningful. Anyway, the reason I recorded this is I actually have another video about Dumbinit where I show some unconventional uses of it, uh, but that'll have to be for another video. I wanted to make sure I introduced this before because it's like, oh, surely I have a video on this, but nope, turns out I don't. Anyway, uh, use an init system in your Docker containers. This is definitely something you should check at work. Otherwise, you know, you're wasting that 10 plus seconds while a container attempts to die all the time. And this probably makes your Kubernetes deploys take longer, or, I mean, I say no, but no one uses Mesos, let's be real. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.